Yeah. And uh, so I'm actually kind of nervous because, you know, I've always wanted to meet him and this is it. You know, we're here in real life <laughs> and I'm dying. I'm dying. So, but he's a really great guy. He's a really nice guy. And he's made it really easy for me. So this, this interview is really awesome for me. So what I want to ask you personally is um, what inspired you to martial arts, to do martial arts and when you got started in like those years, you know, coming up into martial arts first? Yeah, I... I I had a fascination with martial arts when I was really young. Uh, originally, uh, first time I ever seen martial arts, somebody doing martial arts was uh, uh, Charlie Chan, The Detective. It was a show that was on Sunday uh, afternoons and I was watching it with my dad and one time I saw Charlie Chan, this little short Asian guy, throw this big guy. And I was like, holy cow, that looks awesome. And my dad, uh, he was in the US military, he was like, I could show you that throw. So actually my dad taught me my first hip throw. Hmm. And after that I was like, oh, I want to know more. And he's like, I forgot and kind of just put me off for a while. And then uh, eventually I bugged him enough for him to take me to martial art classes. That's awesome. And how did that go? It would what was your first class like? Was it like a wushu class or what kind of style? Uh, uh, Jiu-jitsu, Shod Shotokan uh, Judo, Shotokan Judo, mm -hmm. and later on some Shotokan Karate and Shotokan Jiu-jitsu. Oh wow, did you like those styles? Or? Well, those were the only styles that, uh, like, uh, that were available to me at that mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I really liked them. They were like uh, taught more in a traditional fashion, mm -hmm. you know, than uh, uh, there wasn't that, even though we did compete, it wasn't that, uh, it was more geared uh, towards the, the art itself. Now, those sound more like Japanese styles in comparison to what you're currently doing right now. Yeah. And you seem really fluid. I mean, you're really great at the wushu style. When did you start wushu? And it, do you like it more than when you were doing the more rigid, stiff karate style? Actually, uh, like I started with uh, traditional wushu right after that, that judo, uh, Chicago Judo and Karate Centers closed. And uh, that location closed. And so then I, uh, my dad was like, man, he really likes this. It's good for him, keeps him out of trouble. So he looked for a, a different school. And so we went to, he, my dad found a school in Chinatown, uh, Grandmaster Wei Lun Choi, Lu Hu Ba Fa. Mm. Uh, so he took me there. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, Wei Lun Choi is a very famous guy. Dan and Asano talks about him all the time, how he would love to train with him in Chicago, so, uh, but he, at that time he spoke hardly any English. But my dad served in the military and learned English from serving in the military. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times he was used to speaking to people who didn't know English and he could communicate well with them. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand a word they said, they talked for an hour and it wound up I was going to win and try school. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, so just because they clicked. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first uh, traditional wushu, uh, Luho Bafa, uh, which is like a common uh, water boxing. It's a combination of uh, what they say is a combination of Yang style Tai Chi and Xingyi. Oh wow, Yang style Tai Chi. Well, I used to take Yang style myself, and it's kind of like I guess the more offensive form of Tai Chi. Yeah. Right. Um, so then you liked that a lot more than when you were doing the other style. It was it was different. It was different, and two, he didn't. Uh, uh, Waylon Choi really wasn't w interested in you going to tournaments. Mm -hmm. he it's just old-fashioned training, mm -hmm. you know. So I remember the first two weeks, he showed me a, uh, a bow stance, what they call a front stance, mm -hmm. and then a 60-40 stance, a trinity stance. And when I got tired of doing the bow stance, I would go to trinity stance, and then when I got tired of that, I'd go back to bow stance. And then if I got tired of that, I could do it on the other side. And I did that for two weeks. Oh, wow. During my lesson. That was my lesson before he even taught me anything. I had to hold those for a long time. So the That's approach awesome. was much different. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of know what you're saying because my teacher used to get me on the wall and he used to have me do a split. And he, you know, if I messed up that day, that's where I would be the whole day. I'm just gonna split. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's terrible. tough. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. So um, you said that you would go to circuits and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so you like visited China and all these other places and things like that, right? Yeah. And then, you know, how was, uh, once again, like, how was it like fulfilling, you know, and then, you know, how, how did it help you psychologically and all that growing up? And, yeah, it's it's really different because uh, like when you visit China back in, back in that time, uh, you know, they, 
there wasn't anything else to do but train. It wasn't like you could go sight, really go sightseeing or anything like that. You, you know, I didn't yeah. speak the language, so it wasn't like I was just going to go off and take a look around. So the training, we used to train uh, two and a half hours in the morning and another two and a half hours at night. Straight and, training. And how old were you during this time? Uh, at that time, I was uh, in China. I was uh, 17. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So relatively young, but you know, I had my, uh, like I said, I did, uh, until that time I did the Luha Bafa and then later on I did uh, Seven Star Praying Mantis. Mm. Uh, so that, that particular uh, instructor, Raymond Lai, was an enforcer for the triad, for oh, the tongue. Oh, wow. So he really? was, yeah, so he was, uh, he knew how to fight because his job was to collect money or Wow. to enforce, you know, for the mob, wow. for the Chinese mob. Yeah, oh my yeah. Goodness, so he was, scary. yeah, yeah, he was, I, one time I seen him, uh, I seen a guy come in, and a drunk guy, and it was like, you know, he was like, oh, he's looking around, he goes, oh, you guys do, uh, you know, karate, and, and uh, Lai, Master Lai was like, uh, yeah, yeah, we do that. And he was just, you know, humoring the guy. And the guy is like, I take boxing. And then Lai was like, oh, boxing's really, really good. Mm. And then uh, and then the guy was like, my boxing's better than you. And then mm. Lai was like, I don't think so. Mm. And the guy took a stance and Lai hit him over the head with like his forearm right in the head. Boom, I heard a boom, drop the guy just like that. Oh, wow. He grabbed him by the collar and dragged him out the front door and left him there. And I was, when that happened, I, we were all training, everybody stopped. And then he looks at us and he's like, train. And then we were like all back to tra doing our tra training. <laughs> when I left, I expected to step over his dead body, but it, but he was gone. He, was he gone. never came back, but he, yeah. But the guy, as soon as he struck a stance, he hit him with his forearm right across like that top of his head. Dangerous guy. Man, wow. yeah. Johnny Cage wins. Flawless victory fatality. At, at what point in your life, in your martial arts career, did you then end up doing Mortal Kombat? How did that come about? I kept doing stuff and uh, during a competition at a, a tournament called Battle of Atlanta, they were looking for people to do uh, stunt work for, for a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it was going to be a martial art movie. I didn't know it was going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but it wound up being Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Which, by 2. the way, am I crazy? I was watching Turtles 2 the other day, and I could have sworn I saw you behind Shredder. Yeah, I had After some, he came back from, like, yeah, the dead or whatever. Yeah. Was that I, you? Yeah, I had some acting and stuff in there. Lines that never made the movie, but I did some stuff. I, could, I saw movie. someone yeah. right behind him, like, yeah. like, like, like a kid in a ninja suit. And I, yeah. said, I said to him, is that Daniel Piscina back there? Yeah, it was. I, it is. Look Good at that. I, I could have sworn I saw you, like, right back there, right behind the Shredder. Yeah. I kid yeah. you not. Yeah. And then tonight, when I get back home, I'm going to take a screenshot. Yeah, and there I'm going to send it to you. I'm not nuts. I <laughs> yeah. saw you. I saw you. Uh, I, we did stunts for, we were out in North Carolina for, uh, I'm going to say, over three months, uh, you know, shooting the film, and shortly after that, uh, I used to hang out with a guy, John Tobias, and he called me up, and he was like, hey, I need help with a project. He goes, will you help me, you know, put together some ideas and sell, sell uh, try to sell this idea of a fighting game to Midway, so... And we worked on that and presented that to Midway. Because you knew John Tobias, right? He's like, what is, isn't he like the programmer in Mortal Kombat? He's like the, uh, he is the artist and, and main creator of, okay. of Mortal Kombat. He's the one that did the comic books then, right? Uh, yeah, him and my friend uh, Andrew Kadelka, who was the one who got us all together. Uh -huh. Like he got myself, John, some DJs, breakdancers. He got this group of creative people thought together, martial artists together, including most of the guys from Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 at yeah. that time before uh, John worked at Midway. Did they get a lot of input from you when they were creating the characters? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. it was like, uh, again, because they didn't, uh, uh, we had no idea what direction the game was gonna go through. He wanted the game, uh, so he was like, you know, I can't pay you a lot, but you know, any idea you want, uh, I'll put in the game. And one of the ideas that I wanted, uh, at the time he had Japanese ninjas in there. And you know, it's the, the 90s, so Japanese ninjas yeah. are really popular. Everybody's yeah, Japanese. Shokazugi and... Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he rocks. Shokazugi yeah. rocks. Somebody asked you about his son back there. Yeah, there, yeah. yeah. So then I was like, uh, and then I was uh, like, okay, well, I want, I don't want them to be Japanese ninjas. I want them to be Lin Kuei. 
And John was like, well, that's good. Uh, what, what, I never heard of Lin Kuei. And I was like, exactly, it's a Chinese ninja. You're not supposed to hear that's about awesome. ninjas. And so I told him about the, uh, what I wanted, the, the Lin Kuei. And uh, eventually uh, he took a look at it. I told him what book it was in. He took a look at it and he was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And when I was like, naturally you're going to do it because otherwise I wouldn't do the game. If you didn't put these in, I would not do the game. That's there, awesome. there would be no Mortal Kombat if he didn't do that. And he's like, I'm going to add some color because they're all black and it's hard to see them all black. So, uh, you know, I'll add some color to just so that way they can we can use them in the game a little bit better. That's where the whole yellow and blue yeah. and yeah. green came Yeah, from. so I was like, okay, cool. You're not Reptile cool. as well, right, in the first Yeah, game. I am. Reptile really as well. You are. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, I shot enough. When we were shooting, I shot enough uh, footage to make four different ninjas. Mm. You know, so, wow, that's awesome. so that was available to, to them mm -hmm. at that time. Van Damme was supposed to be in that game, right? Actually, the, it's kind of reverse. Van Damme, we pitched the idea to Midway. Mm -hmm. and Mi originally, Midway said no to Mortal Kombat, the idea of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. But they thought that the fighting game was would be cool, and they were going to give that idea concept to Van Damme. They were going to make a... Uh, cyborg. I think he came off a of cyborg. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do a mainstream fighting game mm -hmm. based off a of cyborg with John Claude Van Damme. Wow. So that fell through, and then they came back to us and said, "Okay, your original concept. We're going to go with that." And uh, Johnny Cage is originally uh, modeled after uh, Daniel Rad and Iron Fist Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. And I think later on, when the company took over and they started. You know, because they're not, technically, uh, uh, Midway wasn't supposed to let me come up with intellectual property mm. ideas and stuff like that, because I don't work for the company. Oh, I see. So that, that is not, technically, it's not really theirs. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, like uh, Scorpion, the idea of Scorpion Sub-Zero is not, they don't really own the rights. They really? own the rights to that because they bought the rights, mm -hmm. but they never asked the guy who put it in the game and created that those ideas for those rights. Okay. And I did not work for them. So... They kind of changed the story a little bit, and they continue to do that to, to kind of hide hide that that uh, that that reality. Yeah, is that so? I think Mortal Kombat's been evolving since the days that you were in it. I, I personally, I myself prefer the originals. He knows that. I play the first two games a lot. Um, you're in them, of course. Um, that's one main reason, and also because I like the fact that you and Liu Kang and all these guys were the good guys, and now it's just completely like so different. Yeah. From what it used to be, and yeah. now, now this could be—I misheard this, but there's like a small, you know, little rumor in the circles that you prefer the Johnny Cage from the original games, like what he is yeah. now. He's changed a lot from what you were in, as Johnny Cage, yeah. right? Yeah. He's, so, he's sort of comedic now. He's sort of like funny yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I think there were, you know, again, it's my opinion. I can only go what was happening at right. the time, but. Uh, Originally, we asked to do two. We were, we were told we we're going to do 200 arcade games. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, when all of a sudden it, everybody was like, "Oh, this is an awesome game!" and they pre-sold 10,000, oh I, I approached John and Ed, and they told me, "Don't worry, we're, we're going to give you a bonus because you know everybody's going to be making money, so you're going to get a bonus." So then it was going to go to home, and they're like, "Don't worry, we're going to give you a bonus." So eventually came time when I was like, you know, when is, it's been two years, when am I going to get my bonus? Mm -hmm. And then the uh, owner asked me if I had any of that written, mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, having witnesses, his own employees, uh, who told me that I would get a bonus for doing, helping create this game. Mm -hmm. So after that is when the things started to change, like the, they said, oh, it's going to be, uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, when people who weren't there originally for the original idea started putting their input. Oh, it's John Claude Van Damme. It looks like John Claude Van Damme. Only because it's the 90s. Anybody would, and we wear biker pants. So anybody with biker pants looks like John Claude Van Damme. That's funny. Because it, because it is the 90s. That's yeah. what we dressed up with. Yeah. You did it too. Yeah, I did. That's what I'm <laughs> so, uh, to so my shame. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, so it, uh, originally it's, it's uh, Daniel Rad from Iron Fist. And if you look at a lot of the characters, they were a lot of the characters were from that Iron mm -hmm. Fist comic book. Like Luke Cage appeared in in uh, who is Jax mm -hmm. appeared in Iron Fist oh, wow. uh, comics. Uh, Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu. If you look at uh, Luke Kang from number two, looks exactly like Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu. You know what? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't. Then know there that. was a character like Sonya. There's, uh, you know what I mean. So a lot mm -hmm. of that concept came from. That particular comic book. Wow! I but a lot of, but because later on, other people uh, who weren't there for the original uh, 
creation and help later on, they were the ones that said, oh, you know, change the story to help Midway be like, oh, we're masking who, that we own the rights to it. Then who is Daniel Pacina? Who is Johnny Cage? What kind of, when you were playing him, what? what but like you, a Daniel Rad, like, like a, a Daniel Rad. Yeah, yeah. So Daniel there was Rad. A, there was a sort of monk side to him then, kind of like a spiritual side. Yeah, his even plane, though he's a Hollywood actor. And well, his plane crashed in the Himalayas, and then he was taken in mm -hmm. uh, and trained mm -hmm. by uh, by Kung Lao. Yeah. So wow. it's a mythical character. So there's a, Kung Lao the Thunder is a mythical character. Uh, so Daniel Rad was trained by Kung Lao. To, and then he goes back to America and becomes this movie star. But he knows, but he is a superhero because he he mastered Iron Fist by hugging a dragon. That is so awesome. That <laughs> so is so he, awesome. So he's got the power of the dragon. You know what I mean? Wow. So, so he's a superhero, and that's where we were. So when we were, when I, if you notice, like that in one and two, he's a little bit more serious because Daniel Rad was serious. He was mm -hmm. like a trained. Trained martial artist, and usually if you're a trained martial artist, you're not so goofy. You know, when you're when you're <laughs> like untrained, me. when you're untrained or informal, you're kind of goofy. You're mm. serious at times. Don't, yeah, don't you've say seen that. that. Yeah, yeah, you've seen the. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's not you know, we goof around, but when yeah. it's time for business, it's time for business. It's time for business. Yeah, yeah that's so, true. So I think that during number three, because they had a Mortal Kombat three that that they had to cancel. Well, they came out with it. It didn't make any money. So then they came out with. They were like, well, our, uh, you know, Pacino's no longer in it, so the M and two, now we're going to have a different guy who's going to be in charge of it. Now, Tobias wasn't really in charge of, or uh, creatively in charge of it. Somebody else mm -hmm. uh, uh, had their creative input come in who didn't originally have any input in one and two, really. Uh, very little. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of a sudden it changed and that failed. Mm -hmm. So then they were like, oh, we, we have to accept the things that Pacina created. We're going to have to put them in the game, but we're going to give it a twist and make it kind of goofy and we're going to kill Cage. And, and I, I, in my opinion, it was more of a, a personal attack to kind of hide the, how the game was originally conceived. Oh, wow. Okay. You okay. know, it's corporate America, man. They're tough. Yeah. Do you want to go into a little bit more insight on that or yeah, like yeah, on, yeah. in your past with, with them? Uh, yeah. Certain controversies or do you feel comfortable Yeah, yeah well, that? yeah, well, too, it's like, uh, uh, again, when they said that you have it in writing as two, they put out a, uh, they put out a false story that I did Bloodstorm yeah, uh, with, uh, uh, without their permission. In reality, I, the job for Bloodstorm, the guy who created Bloodstore and Leaf used to do help the background work for Mortal Kombat 2. Mm. So he left for a different company. Mm. Then John and Ed called me up on the phone and mm -hmm. John asked me to come in to his, to his office. So I mm -hmm. came into John's office and then we went to Ed's office. The only time I've been, ever been in Ed Boone's office. Uh, and they, there we, they were like, hey, Leaf wants you to help with this game, you know, but you should help them, but you can't dress up exactly like Johnny Cage. And mm. so they're the ones who, who said, make sure you change this and that and this and that. And even, like, Ed told me how much to charge. He was like, hey, whatever you think it charging, charge triple. And mm. he goes, and then you're going to learn. If, you, if he says yes right away, you know next time you do a job, ask for more. Oh, wow. And so I, I was like, okay. So I, and I asked for what uh, I thought was fair. And right away the guy was like, yes. So I was like, crap, I should ask for more. <laughs> like, you know, like Ed said, I should have freaking asked for more. But I didn't. But I think because of, at that time, the internet was more controlled by corporation, even though the internet was started with taxpayer dollars. <laughs> you know, it, right now they, they have a, they put this, all this businesses put a lock on the internet charging you for this or that and this or that, when originally it was developed with taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. So we actually, Pay for the internet now that somebody else is charging us for. Mm -hmm. Isn't that freaking crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, it's like oh, you know, it's mm -hmm. like uh, these corporations have this thing. Oh, you know, oh, we need we're going to create this drug, but first we're going to take taxpayer dollars and create the drug, and then we're going to sell it for a profit for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, they, they do that all the time. They do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. so it's so this too is I think because they had that that they put out that false story that oh he got fired for for Bloodstorm and there's no way to counter that. Because you, 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 it's difficult to get on the internet to, to, to tell your story to the story. Yeah. So yeah. now, thanks to you and other interviews, that people can hear about how the game was really developed and hear details about it that usually are not. You know, people say, "Oh, I did this," but they don't have any 
any stories or any collaborations that, that go with it? I, look, I'm as a kid, uh, I, you're one of my heroes. So as a kid, I read EGM, Electronic Gaming Monthly. Yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah. And then those were the reports coming in, and they made you look bad. Yeah. They made you look really bad. Now I'm, I'm talking as as a fan. Okay, this is not something that he's he's telling me. You look like the bad guy, but I've always been kind of like a smart kid. So I, even then, I kind of knew at, at 13 or 14, there's got to be more story behind this. Yeah. So here I am. I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, and... because it, yeah, because they control it, and they again, I think they're, you know, uh, the whole company's thing was we're going to do 200 games, and so in order to do this game, we need this guy. So and and so in order to get this guy, we're going like, to have to let him create because we really are not going to pay him for him. But if he creates it, it's, it'll look good on his resume and stuff like that, that he helped create it. Especially Rich, too. Rich gave a lot of ideas for, for Mortal Kombat. For mm -hmm. all the, for, for Rich a lot Divizio of the is Kano. Yeah, Rich Divizio is Kano gave a lot of, you know, he's the creator of Get Over Here. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the one who thought of it. He's the one who thought of, of uh, the skeleton for, for Scorpion to be a skeleton underneath the, the mask. You know, he he uh, he he had a lot of input on on like, oh, do this or that, or kind of just help with the creative idea, especially when you know, because most of it, you know, people can downplay the filming of it, but most of the creation of the story and the ideas were during the filming of it, mm. because we would be goofing around, and all of a sudden this idea would come up, and then, you know. Uh, it would come up and then there'd be a better idea and too, thank God, because I think because of uh, Tobias was an artist and it was like his, the story, story was his, but he was always one willing to take the best idea. Really? So if he would, he, he'd, we'd start off with one idea and if he'd hear another idea, he'd be like, oh, we're doing that. That's he, the best idea for this creation. He's the one that drew all those bios inside the manuals and all that, right? Yeah. They're like really strong and like, yeah. Yeah, he wow. did. He did all that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The way that captured our imagination is just crazy, right? A combination of you digitally there, and then, or I guess that's the word. Yeah. And then the drawings and all that stuff, man. It's just wow, what an impact, yeah. man. Yeah. On our minds. Yeah. It was. It. it uh, like I said, originally Midway said no to the game, so I think when it started happening, and and people saw the physicality of it they really got inspired to join in and to help with the game because there's a lot of breakthroughs with that game and it wasn't because they're oh we just had to do a breakthrough it was because they would see the video and be like oh shit i got oh, i got an idea how to create this you know yeah, what i mean yeah. they were sparked by the physicality of the creation genius yeah well, you yeah. guys were geniuses yeah wow. they would jump in you know help with technology and technology was slow but they would get inspired by it by just us mm -hmm. because I remember going in nobody knew my name and all of a sudden one day when walking in to Midway Games and people I didn't know were tapping me on the back and were, hey what are you what's going on hey I'm gonna step in later watch you film okay come on wow. hey well, all of a sudden that was everybody's best friend look at that <laughs> yeah wow wow I want to I want to ask you a personal martial arts question mm -hmm. what is your philosophy in the martial arts what do you believe in and and how do you see martial arts how do you share that with others? What do you tell them? What, the, the, what their walk should be in martial arts? Martial arts, uh, a couple things. Is Mar it spiritual for you? Uh, it, it has become spiritual not because of, uh, not because of a granola or you know, <laughs> you're friggin' anything like that, crazy mm -hmm. anything like that. It's, uh, it's become spiritual because of, of uh, the way of life and training. Um, uh, you know, I study martial arts and I love a lot of different styles and I, I, I learned eight different Chinese martial arts style, styles, the whole systems. Mm -hmm. So not only the hand forms, but the weapons forms and the philosophy of fighting and things like mm -hmm. that. And that didn't, that, even though I knew that, I was still technically, I wasn't a, a master. Mm -hmm. But one day when I was doing some movement, my, my master noticed like, oh, you have the body connection, meaning you can go seamlessly from one technique to the next technique, at, at at your at your physically best, mm. you know what I mean. You mm -hmm. you can sense sense that, and then moving around, he goes, you know what a guy is going to do before they're going to do it, you know, type mm -hmm. of thing. If you can, if I connect with them, if I get, if I touch them or get close to them, I already know where their body weight is, what are what techniques are available at that point, mm -hmm. because in order to do a different technique, they're going to have to shift their body, and that's their move. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you, you know, it's like chess. 
Mm -hmm. So if you do one move and then you're like, oh, no, I want to do a different move. I'm coming in on you yeah. because I already know where you're kind of open. Mm -hmm. So when I reached that, they, I, I, I considered like got a master level. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, you're a master level. You're conscious mm -hmm. of your body. You're conscious of your position. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, you know how to correctly put the body so, so it has its maximum energy potential. Mm -hmm. And then through that, I started kind of, kind of weird stuff just kind of being aware of other other things mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, a, a word that turns a lot of people off is is uh, is like God a presence of a God but mm -hmm. for me it, it's the I, I think of God as like like the force it's more like energy we've kind of talked about this before yeah you and I. yeah mm -hmm. so so my definition is a little different than than the common people yeah. because yeah. you know if uh, too I think in the older versions, they also thought of that because if you, if you make God like a man or a woman, it has the fallacies of a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. But if you have God as energy, everything's energy. Rock is anything that can come together, it has a consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A mm -hmm. rock has a consciousness because you could say, uh, uh, you could say, oh, it's just a rock. No, it came together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even mm -hmm. though it's pressure or something, something holds it together. Why doesn't it just disappear? Hmm. Because there's a consciousness, some type mm -hmm. of consciousness. Being conscious at a different, that's a consciousness at, at a certain level, maybe not people thinking of, uh, oh, I can think of everything as also consciousness. But so that, all of a sudden, I became aware of, of that type of energy. When you become. That something was holding everything together. Yeah, something is hoping, or a synergy. How come mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, it. it you're thinking about the same thing that somebody you're close to is thinking. Mm. You have that connection, that electricity or something, some connections in there. Mm. You know what it is? I don't know because science Freeways hasn't explained it whatever, yet. Yeah. yeah, but mm -hmm. again, science one day will prove it and then it'll be like, oh, before we didn't believe it. Just like, you know, <laughs> just like the world is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, uh, like we're all here together. So it's kind of like has a has yeah. kind of like a energy so you have like a weird connection yeah so when you get a taste of that all of a sudden you realize things can be a lot more possible than than you think there mm. could be like that conscious people need to be aware of like you're connected to everybody mm. you know yeah, that's and, pretty deep that's yeah pretty yeah deep. You, you know that's why i try to be nice to everybody because they're a reflection of 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 me Mm -hmm. The reflection of you. We are. Yeah. We are in this earth together. Yeah. No, I mean that's your belief. That's what keeps you going every day. Yeah, and that's uh, too with my training. I try to train with that in mind. Try to, you know, when I'm right from the get go, you have to be. I'm. I'm on. Mm. I'm not. It's not like oh, I'm. Uh, I am only defensive because I understand the consequences of being offensive. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know that, oh, if the guy lifts his hand, that's my first target. I'm going to try to go for the muscles in between here, try to strike with the just the knuckles and try to cut the muscle. Mm. Because if I cut that muscle or bruise that muscle, now he loses, he can't use this. Yeah, he starts to... Yeah, because mm -hmm. if I, I punch him right here, boom. Mm -hmm. Inflame these muscles or cut these muscles because the muscles can grind against bone and that'll cut itself. You know, two, if I punch the guy right here, I will shatter his elbow. You know what I mean? So if I'm like this and I throw like a, a hook into this, for sure I'm going to shatter your elbow. You've got a good hook there. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know what I mean? So you think like, okay, since I know that, I'm not going to let him do that to me either. So I kind of like am waiting for the proper moment for to, to do the technique because I know the consequences of, of going into it haphazardly. Mm, so a lot okay. of people are like, oh, it's a defensive art. It's, it's, it's not, it is a defensive art, but not because it's anti-fighting right it's because i know the consequences of you know mm -hmm. uh, of what my actions if i start to do if you read the kick coming in and you decide my punch my foot that's going to suck for me mm -hmm. you know yeah, so that's it's, true. Yeah, so all of a sudden you're like a little bit more off on the off uh on the defense because you know the consequence of being an offense and that way martial arts can sometimes be like a relationship between two people isn't oh it man that's for sure weird. it's weird yeah yeah. Feed off each other. Mm -hmm. You get to know somebody in those situations. Yeah. Whether it's wushu practice, whatever fighting, whatever it is, it's yeah. It's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Um. So you're really good friends with all the guys that were the cast in Mortal Kombat. You guys still see each other. I see that. You guys yeah. hang out a lot. Yeah, hang out. But I'm gonna ask you this: Have you guys ever like played around, like kind of like fighting, like just maybe a sparring session here or? Not in a long, not in a long time. Not but in those a long guys time. Are, But the, all those guys know. They know. Well, most of those guys know. 
that yeah, yeah that like yeah, the guy who like, plays Kun Lao Marquez I see you a lot with him yeah yeah but you. they all know that like they're not in Al Pacino yeah mm. even my brother's like oh my brother would easily take all of us really yeah the only this is, on, this, yeah. is this off record oh yeah record? no this is on record you could ask them you could ask them. the only one wait a minute who you're... I never really moved around with is mm. is Philip. you know what I mean Philip. yeah yeah to, and two it's re respectful but to, two he, he forgets like that whole defense mm -hmm. you know what I mean if there's a fake coming in I'm gonna break the fake really you know what I mean it doesn't have to be fake if you start extending that arm it's, mm -hmm. it's like I'm gonna own it so oh, wow. so you know what I mean yeah so that's why those guys are like oh yeah we don't really do that because he is he's like one because I'm kind of like have one or two before them they know like oh shit well what do I really do I'm kind of freaking out I don't know what to do and then when they're thinking that I can see they're thinking that and then I go in so oh, it's wow. kind of like so they're afraid. I can't believe you're saying this. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but you can ask them. You can ask, you know. No, no, I, ask, ask, I believe yeah. you. I believe yeah. you. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you can ask my well, brother. They'd be like, yeah, that was me. Carlos yeah. Pacina. Yeah. And he would, wow, you guys yeah. sparred and all that and played around. Yeah, and, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've often wondered who was more, like, efficient in yeah. that area. Yeah. But, too, it's uh, uh, justly so. This martial arts, what I do, like my brother Carlos, it, he is, uh, uh, he's an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a graphic artist, so a mm -hmm. lot of his time is spent doing that. While while that time that he's doing that, I'm actually training in martial mm -hmm. arts. So that's too. You know, Rich is uh, Rich Kano is an engineer. He 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 works on trains. Mm -hmm. You know, rebuilds trains for the CTA, Chicago Transit Authority. Oh wow, that's so, where he gets all the muscles from. Yeah, so eight or nine mm -hmm. hours he's doing that. But you know, while he's doing that, I am training or doing like research on training. Tony Marquez is actually pretty funny, Kung Lao. He's like, because he has a band and he sings, and he goes, guess mm -hmm. what? I am, who would ever know that I am really Johnny Cage and you are really Kung Lao? That's what he wow. says to me. He's like, I should have been Johnny Cage and you should have been Kung Lao. Because that that's what our life is. He goes, that life is it. He goes, I want to be this rock star, you know, this Hollywood rock star, and you want to be the Shaolin monk. Who would ever thought of that? Who would ever thought of that? Yeah, yeah. but he, wow. yeah, he said it. And I'm just like, wow, that's pretty cool. So, wow. yeah, when we're out, he always says that to, to just fans and stuff like that. He goes, you know what, in reality, I'm Johnny Cage, and he's really Kung Lao. That's really amazing. Yeah. Hey, what's that video I saw the other day? Uh, really good choreography, and then you were, like, endorsing something. Oh, we did a short film with my friend, Louis Root. He, he reached out, this guy reached out to me, uh, Lewis and he's like hey would you consider doing a collaboration I could fly into Chicago and uh, we can shoot like a short I want to do a short and mm -hmm. I was like sure if you fly in I, I'm glad to help you mm -hmm. so we were, we we're shooting this stuff and then we're he have this one thing where he, I hit, he gets hit and then he falls down he's like oh man I can't get up and then I was like oh wait a minute you got to film this and then I was like and then I filmed that commercial that was really good <laughs> yeah it was, was pretty really funny good. right it was hilarious. No, but your technique in it was really nice too. Yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you. Really but it was stuff. hilarious. We had so much fun. So he's gonna come out, I think, next month with that. We did a, he did a, a Scorpion versus Sub Zero uh, fight scene, and I'm in there reminding Sub Zero of, I mean, uh, Scorpion, reminding mm -hmm. Scorpion of, you mm -hmm. know, how, how it was training in the old days. That's I'm pretty cool. Flash. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it should be all right. So to end the interview, I'm going to ask you the last thing is, uh, what is your training regimen like in your workouts every day? Because I see you doing all these weapons every day on your yeah. thing. And My personal training is I try to wake up in the morning, go to the regular gym, mm -hmm. try to do a little bit of cardio, a little bit of lifting. Mm -hmm. After that, I have a 50 pound pellet, iron pellets in a bag and I punch that like seven or eight hundred times. Oh my punch goodness. and poke, strike with my different stroke pipes, uh, different uh, hand techniques on it. Look at him, he's like in <laughs> awe. <laughs> yeah. So that way, we, uh, that's what I mean. If I tap you with my fist and I do the uh, Dao Jiao, I get it from Plung Dragon, or already made, I'm gonna plug them. And you put in there ointment so you don't get arthritis and you don't get you know uh, too much swelling in your hand, but then I whack that thing, elbows and po uh, pokes, finger pokes and this and that. So that way, if I ever tap you with it, it Goodness, I'm man. used to tapping iron. You see this guy? So Do not mug that. him. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, that's why, that's why I say, like, if somebody would like that, and if, if you throw a kick, kick and I catch it, it's, 
that's it's not going to be like <laughs> it's not going to be like oh I get to throw another kick. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be like you're going to put any weight on that foot. Yeah, and I'm, you're, yeah. you're here with this interview. I'm looking at your hands, man. Deadly, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> deadly. Yeah. Really so, deadly. so I do that, and then I go to uh, then I go to teach some uh, teach mostly privates. Look for me at Master Piscina or uh, uh, Master Piscina uh, www.masterpiscina. So. Uh, I have uh, some students who are from different backgrounds, like I have a sixth degree Aikido uh, 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 guy, I have some Taekwondo, fourth and fifth degree Taekwondo guys, uh, some karate, regular traditional karate guys, because at one point they, you know, all traditional martial arts are really the same. You know, there's only X amount of ways to make a fist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't make a fist in a new different way because I'll break it because mm -hmm. it's been tested. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the concepts really, they don't have to really learn anything else. Mm -hmm. All I do is take, I, I try to lead them to consciousness, mm -hmm. to be like, to get that streamlined, to be the laser beam as opposed to just the bullet, to mm -hmm. kind of have that constant attack, how mm -hmm. to shift in without, you know, with, uh, with uh, you know, the most efficient energy. So a lot of them, I think I get, get reached out a lot because it, it's that I never, I don't take any rank away from them and I don't teach them anything that they don't already know. I just make it so it's more efficient. Everything is more efficient. Mm. Oh, this joint lock is like this. Well, okay, well, we can start this joint lock with it already breaking. <laughs> you know, you don't need to get to here to break the, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. The way you grab it and the way you press this pressure you can already start breaking stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. you, by the time you finish it, you can break more joints. You know, that's cool. so that's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. yeah, so that's what it th this stuff kind of leads you to. Uh, so I'm still nervous, but just less nervous. And I thank you for this interview. Oh, thanks, See brother. Thank you, oh, brother. You know, I'm a little bit more calm, you know, but thank you so much. Yeah, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was thanks. great meeting you. Yeah. yeah. So Finally um, face to face after all these years. Oh my goodness, man! I'm like it's about flipping time. I'm elated. I'm. <laughs> yeah. Thank man. you so much, uh, man. Thanks, Daniel. Man, brother. This is great. You got caged! <laughs>